time for a quick recap. Dorking were up in Hartlepool. They stayed over in a really nice hotel that Mark was convinced was haunted. Can't even think about football because uh, I'm scared shitless. Then they came to the ground and Mark decided to try and steal one of the stands. That with Fit Meadowbank, down that side. We've established that the people of Hartlepool once hanged a monkey for being a French spy. Mark told Tom Blair to cut in from the wing. Just keep cutting inside and fucking getting that rifle off, yeah? And Hartlepool really need to win. We need to win. And so now it's time for kickoff. In front of a crowd of 4,002 fairly loud people, Dorking are far less awed than perhaps they would have been last season. And Mark has told his players that a good start could rile the home audience, who were somewhat frustrated with their club's current plight. Down, down, down. Still, Dorking's attempts at a fast start are soon hampered by, shockingly, another injury. Oh, Mark is done. Mark is done. Hammy. What happened there? What? Fucking hell. Is Hammy? Cool to keep the midfield free. That's a fucking nightmare, that. Relax. Yeah. Hammy, go on. So you're Hammy? Yeah, it's gone. Do you feel it going? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, that's Cypher. Go okay, you no, the nah, Hammy's gone, Hammy's gone. Cool, eh? Same again, same as the other night, okay yeah. mate? Brilliant mate, okay? Fuck me. No Great opportunity for you now, mate. He's fucked now for a long time. Come on, kill it! No good, mate. Or just bang. Yeah. Gone. Totally gone. Mate. It's a fucking luck. <laughs> so Southern softy. Southern softy. With the Wanderers captain withdrawn after barely two minutes, the Pools sense an opportunity to get stuck into their rattled opponents. You got a step, Tom. That's Carl's man. Tom, you got a step. Ross desperately need to get Tom Blair to press the right man. Tom! 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 Tom. He's, He's your, your press! Man, Hendry! Hendry is your man! Carl! Carl! He's your man! Relax! The root of the issue seems to be that some of the players are not entirely sure what formation they're supposed to be in. Tom, here's your press. Here's your press. No, we're four. That's why it's your press. No, 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 no. I get it. As we were. Cow, same formation. Same, same, same as we were. Same. Dan, Dan, back four. Free, free, free. With the formation issues ironed out, Dawking can settle down and begin to get back into the game. Although Hartlepool are enjoying the early spells of possession. Blair! That's stay! The one, stay! Press him! Press! Cow! 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 Good day, right, Cow! Forward if you switch, can. Switch! Set it up! In 10 minutes in, danger man Matt Briggs finally gets Dorking into the Hartlepool penalty area. Ah. 
The attack is short-lived, however, and while Dawkins' shape has returned, Pauls is still in control. We were going to explain in the intro earlier that Hartlepool merged with West Hartlepool to become Hartlepools, while the club was called Hartlepools United. Although the escort dropped in the 70s, the fans still call them Pools. But the intro was already too long. David Ferguson finds space down the left and crosses for Emmanuel diaz -Sarui. But the striker can't get over the ball and Dawkins can get away with a goal kick. Julie, we're three for three, pick up! See that? Yeah. We're 15 minutes in now and that means it's been over 10 since Dawkins had an injury. With that in mind, the referee's taking no chances, especially when he sees Joe Cook's head whack the ground. What's that for, Lionel? <laughs> yeah, but we have to play with them both for 30 seconds. Yeah, shit, innit? Can you tell me where you are? Where? Tell me. What's the score? No, no. Can you repair that? Head food. And what's the score on that? 1-0. No. Okay, have you got any pain in the back of your neck? No, I'm all right. I just, it was just a landing on my back, but yeah. I would have got back up. How's your back down here? It's fine. Yeah? yeah? Interestingly, the referee doesn't make Joe leave the field. Maybe because it was his call to stop the game. We don't know that rule for sure. Either way, that's good refereeing. There's evidence that Dawkins' domination of the ball is beginning to bother the pool's players. Tom Crawford gets a yellow for taking out Dan Pibus. Could this be relevant later? Probably. Oh, my. Dan Gallagher's header marks the first save required from Pete Jamieson as confidence begins to ebb through the Wanderers' veins like Mitch the Kit Man after his third berries and cherries. Pools are really under it now as Jason Price stands the ball up for Dan Gallagher to have another header at goal. strikes the ball sweetly with his forehead, only for Jameson to once again get a hand to the effort. Make sure they deliver, don't play short, because they're, they're not getting any close contacts. Tell them to deliver the ball. Joe Cook defied physics when he was potentially hurt earlier, but somehow played on without being injured, and physics didn't like that. So a cut upon his forehead, I say. Physio Izzy is once again called into action, and while there's no concussion concern, the cut on Joe's eye could be a deal breaker. It's on his eye. Where is it? It's is just it there open? on your eye. It's yeah, deep. You, not deep, but you've got a little gash. Show me! Show me! Because once he starts moving again, it's going to start bleeding again. Stay off, stay off, stay off. How is going on? I need to play truth here. I'm not, I'm not going to risk it for sitting around open, okay? With the crucial match against Kidderminster coming up in three days, Cook's to come off, and that means Harry Ottaway is coming on, and Dawkins have to change shape. 3 5 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to go 3 5 2. That's, that's all we've got. Yeah, yeah. That's all yeah. we've got. 3 5 2, okay? Three, send, oi, send that, tell George and tuck in. Three, you can tuck in now. 3 5 2. As Dawkins reformats, Hartlepool have a chance to end the half with a goal. <laughs> well done, lad. Well done. Well adjusted. Do we do we need to get this? Obviously, we've got a game Tuesday, so we need to know exactly what to do to this. Done already, yeah. Cool. Right, hear me, hear me. Well done, Dan, Cookie, Cow, and. Uh, well done, they've, they've created absolutely nothing. I need you to stand with me here. Yeah? Because on the pitch, I don't think you're with each other as much as you can be. So let's just start tuning in, because it's nil-nil, and we've actually dominated a large part of that half, so stay with me. Obviously, far from ideal, with two subs down. But this is what these stories are made of, innit? You know, we'll be on the bus down, we didn't, didn't really fancy that. We understand that's a big challenge for us today, OK, all right? We know that, and that's just the hand we've got dealt. Can we tighten up the midfield now? Because I don't, 
I don't think, in, I, I would rather it be, stay with me, I'd rather it be off the ball, I'd rather both you and Chorley have the game in front of you, off the ball, and let Josh do all them little stretching bits, because I don't want to give these something on the break. What I don't want to do is try and go gung-ho to win this game in the next 10 minutes, blow up Blair and Briggs, when we've got fucking one sub left, okay, yeah? It could be a great, great win, because so far we should be a goal to the good. Yeah, it could be a great, great win, yeah? Um, if we get time to slow it down, I'm not talking slow it down to take a point, but you know, if you get time to you know, naturally slow the game down, we do it, okay, yeah? You've done really well to fucking respond to having a few of your men down. You all right, Briggsy, yeah? You okay, you worried about yourself? You okay, yeah? Right, let's go, come on, let's go. Dorking very much grew into the game in that first half, and with the pool's crowd suitably subdued, the onus is on the Wanderers to keep pushing forwards because that's how winning is done. Cool, Aaron Cool fires a warning roller past the goal, and when Hartlepool try to come back at Dorking, Daniels, Gallagher and Pybus make sure they don't get very far. It's brilliant, by the way. Hartlepool do eventually manage to get back into the danger zone, and their agitated fans are perturbed further still when Jason Pryor gets another head injury. Well, it's, it's his first, but Dorking, Dorking second. Or third, actually, it's third. They're third. <laughs> Jay certainly isn't faking it. The big man has collided heads with Emmanuel Honoriassi and received a nasty cut. Just got a blood injury again. Just bandage it up, Kev. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to. We're just going to let it stop bleeding first. This is bleeding quite a bit still. Hartlepool aren't seeing much of the ball at all now, and the Wanderers sense the logic in keeping hold of possession. Drive, Geese, drive! Oh. Let's enjoy the ball. Harrison! Keep it! Give it down! Give it down! Drive! Yeah. Drive! Down! clearly gets the ball, but these days, well, that's probably excessive force and could go either way on that. Pools can't make the most of the set piece and Wanderers will charge back up the field. Kind of charging. They go back up the field. Bandage don't like Dr. Jeffrey Radcliffe. Jason Pride gets on the end of a backstick corner, and if there's one thing a defence should find unforgivable, it's letting Jason Pryor have a free run at a deep corner. Pryor nods across goal, and honestly, Aaron Cool knocks it in. It's his goal, but Mark wanted to give it to his striker, so we have to go with that. Sorry, Cooley. Who scored it? Soon after the goal, Pryor finds his head under attack yet again. It's a great flick on, by the way. He's got another cut on his eye now. Oh, no, it's, no. it's quite big. They're either replacing JP with Isaac Philpotts for defensive stature or Ryan Seeger for counter attack opportunities. It's a lot of mobility, a lot of height. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Seeger, you. I'm going to do Seeger. Do me a favor quickly. Go and talk to the boys. Just tell them I'm, make, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to keep the shape the same. Okay. They just need to keep the ball at the back. Okay. Keep, if we can keep the 4v2, 
Okay, we're doing it so we can keep the plus one defensively, okay? Mark's chosen Seeger so that Dorking can keep the ball more effectively with their current defensive setup. And he's keen to congratulate Pryor on his goal in earshot of the nearby fans. Great goal, Jace! Great goal, Jace! Well done, mate! Great goal, son! Well done, Jace! Job done, mate! <laughs> We've been impressed with the officiating today, but let's be clear, stopping a counter-attack, especially with a shirt pull, has to be a yellow card. There's just no escaping that. That's a yellow card. That's a yellow card, folks. That's a yellow card, mate. You are joking me! Has to be a yellow card. Has to be a yellow card. That has to be a yellow card. The shirt puller was Tom Crawford. You know, the guy who got booked in the first half. That has to be a yellow card. That is unbelievable. Is he booked already? The fourth is literally looking at a piece of paper that says Tom Crawford has been booked already. <laughs> he's fucking tugged him. What the fuck? So that's not is a yellow booked? card. Don't is tell he booked it. already, that guy? All no, no, no. oh, right, okay. Presumably he knows how mad Mark would go if he told the truth. Still, with the way things are going for Dorking here, they probably won't need an extra player to see this one through. It'd be a shame, mate. Wait, how's he saved that? How's he saved that? Harry, the hot dog Ottaway, fires a header at goal, only for Jameson to once again repel, like Kitman Mitch after three berries and cherries. With ten minutes to go, Hartlepool finally strings some passes together, and they come up with a move that might just save them from defeat. Just as Hartlepool think they're back in the game, a linesman's flag saves the Wanderers. And even though it was a heart-stopping moment, it was well worth it, if only for the reaction of the home fans behind Mark's dugout. There's so much going on here that we really need to give each supporter their moments. These two are pumped up with vitriol and subsequently disappointment. Then there's the passion and the sorrow. This one we call easy come easy go. And finally, this one's just a little bit heartbreaking. The guy in the black is trying to grasp Mark up to the fourth official for presumably winding him up. <laughs> the disallowed goal itself is a bit of a mess. Josh Umeira's shot was going in. Dan Gallagher has grabbed Dia Saruwe's shirt. Dia Saruwe is definitely offside and doesn't need to touch the ball. Disallowed or not, the goal should concern Dorking, as they still have 10 more minutes to see out here. Put him in. Get out of him, take out of him, take him off. Just go narrow. Angry now. Hell going. Come on, see Get some more, mate. I'm about to get killed. <laughs> Relatively new winger Tom Blair cuts inside from the left and rolls a shot perfectly into the far corner, beating the pretty reliable left hand of Pete Jameson, sealing Dorking's best away win oh, since last Tuesday. Bring two. Got to keep going long, then lock on. Like every fleet, tell them. Go long, lock on. Shut up! You're like my old woman! <laughs> Anyone owning fucking protection companies in Hartlepool? 
Oddly, the angriest man in Hartlepool is keen to shake Mark's hand. Alas, the gaffer was too busy managing to notice. Oh, Paul! Jump your hand! Oh. Cheers, mate! Hope you enjoyed it, lads. I hope you enjoyed it, boys. So I hope I enjoyed it. That's a fucking win, that one. That's a fucking win, my son. Fucking too easy. It's not a B team. How's that not a yellow car when he runs away? That, that's a yellow when he runs away. Cheers, guys. The one on oh, mate, the one there. But listen, great game for that. The talking one is way! <laughs> there is a 70 minute version of this episode on YouTube memberships and we try and make them as long as possible over there so feel free to join us it's a monthly subscription it doesn't cost too much and helps make the show continue because we really need the support otherwise just hit the like and the subscribe button and that helps us too and maybe leave a comment see you next week <laughs>